Up next, with the difficulty of getting the required player counts to try out new games, we step into the time machine and resurrect a classic review of the Star Trek deck building games originally released in 2012. Alright, back in 2012, Bandai Games released three different Star Trek deck building games, all designed by Alex Bykov, featuring art by Jack L. Hung. I originally reviewed the Next Generation Next Phase version of the game on my Windsor Gaming resource blog in 2013. After finding these games at a local warehouse for a sale price of $5 Canadian each. And those had an MSRP of $34.99 at launch. Yeah. Now, over on the blog, tabletopbellhop.com, I republished my original review, along with the original pictures and everything that I took back then. Sorry about the quality on those. And added a bit of commentary, cleaned it up a bit, but left pretty much all of the original comment content. Now, I don't want to read off the full review here on the show, but what I will do is summarize quickly before getting on to my thoughts about these games about seven years later. A lot of things have changed in the deck building genre in seven years. Yes. So there are three different Star Trek deck building games that were released. There's the original series featuring Kirk and crew, the next generation featuring Picard and team, and a next generation next phase version, next phase, sorry, that is also Picard's crew, but with a focus on the board. Now, each of these games are standalone games, but can be combined roughly to you and used as expansions for each other, but were definitely designed to be played standalone. Each game features a completely unique set of cards, four different scenarios that actually play quite differently from each other. And there are four different scenarios in each of the boxes. So with all of them, there's 12 different scenarios. Now, each of these scenarios features a bunch of competitive scenarios, some team-based scenarios, and one specific cooperative scenario. That's in the next phase edition only. Oh, was the co-op uh, still relatively rare for deck building games back then? Uh, Magic the Gathering sort of pushed everything in a pretty competitive uh, card game direction <sighs> to be honest i don't know if there was another competitive or cooperative deck builder out at the time like dominion definitely wasn't trains wasn't i'm trying to think of what was out back then tonto core isn't i don't think there was this might have been the first cooperative deck builder i'd have to google that to know for sure though i can't think of one now basic deck building applies for these all these star trek games use a rotating market and what i mean by that is new cards are placed as cards are bought it's not like dominion where the market stays the same it's not a static market it changes um in addition to this now here's the thing that's not standard deck building is you have a space deck and on your turn after doing your usual buy new cards from the market thing you can explore space you do that by flipping over the top card of the deck now this deck has all kinds of ships to fight events that affect all players and missions you can go on now, the missions are all pulled right from Star Trek canon, all from very specific episodes, and they are generally beat by players having specific requirements in play at the time. So that'll be based on their flagship they have in play and their cards in hand at the time. Your goal is to, in most of the missions is to complete, or sorry, most of the scenarios is to complete missions, which will give you points, and most scenarios are raised to a set number of points. Well, nothing especially innovative there. Now, back when I first reviewed this game, I had only played the Next Generation Next Phase Edition on the original review. And while I enjoyed the standard game well enough, uh, in particular it's called the Explore 2 mission, I, it was okay. What I really liked was the cooperative scenario. That's where the players are trying to take out the board before you get assimilated. Now, I enjoyed that game enough that I went out and picked up the other two versions of the game. <clears throat> now, even if I hadn't read ahead, I expect this is the point where we introduce the problem after you spent money on more bits. Yeah, thankfully it wasn't my money. It was only five bucks a box, right? So after trying all of the different versions of the games, there was a definite problem where if a player was able to get a better flagship earlier in the game, which is something you could do during that exploration deck, if you found an opponent's ship, you could destroy it, but you could also diplomacy it. And if you diplomacy the other ship, it becomes your new capital ship and all of the cat ships in the deck are better than your starting enterprise or whatever the your starting ship is which oddly were all the same enterprise but whatever um what would happen is whoever got that ship first tended to steamroll they, they just snowballed and because now they had a better ship so they could compete harder missions and then they can use that better ship to get even better ships and all the other players tend to get left behind 
Interestingly, this wasn't a problem in the original series version. That had different rules for flagship rules, where you didn't swap up your ship as often. And this obviously didn't matter in the cooperative version. It was actually good for the whole team if someone ends up with a better ship. But all other versions of it, though, it didn't really work. And this is a tough problem to evict once it's been introduced into any game. So due to this runaway leader problem, I actually don't ever recommend, don't pick up the next generation version of the game. Just the standard, the next generation's got a blue cover with Picard on it. Just skip that. There's, there's no reason to pick that up nowadays. I also don't recommend playing the next phase edition, which is the other next generation version, with the exploration rules, the standard rules. So that leaves us with the original series edition. And I got to say, it's okay. I, it's it's a decent game. It's, it's a pretty solid deck builder. It, it's But it's just nothing special compared to what's out nowadays. But if you're an original series fan and you're a huge Trek fan and you want to play with Kirk and crew, it's a solid enough game. You know, I, We had fun with it. But lucky for Lee for Bandai, there are lots of original series fans out there. Yes, there are. Now... Overall, I will stand by what I said in the original review in 2012, and that is the best way to play Star Trek the deck building game is to pick up the next generation, next phase edition green box with the board queen on the cover and stick to the cooperative rules only. Now, even with that said, even with that caveat, I have now sold off all three copies of the game. I did hold on to next phase the longest because it was the best of the series, but I let that go too. Because all of these games just feel dated. They're just overall less fun than more modern deck builders like while i dig the star trek theme i'd rather play tyrants of the underdark as as instead as a competitive deck builder and if i want that cooperative experience i'll break out like legendary encounters aliens as, as a cooperative deck builder that i'd rather play yeah and i mean you know if you're a fan if you don't if you don't want the legendary there's always the uh the dc uh and uh similar series whatever they call their their system um out there as well there's a lot of things out there if you if you check out board game geek you're looking at uh, mid to low sixes for yeah. these games it's and it's very point. obvious that the the start the next generation not next phase next just plain next generation is the weakest of all of them yeah. even even by rankings which doesn't surprise me at all like that that's just our personal experience having tried them all now what i would love to see though is these to come back I would love to see an update to these classic deck building games. Something more modern, better balanced, runaway leader problem fixed. Like, I really liked the combination of normal deck building with that extra deck, with that space exploration. It just, it wasn't balanced. It didn't quite work. I just need someone to develop the game a bit more, play test it more. I don't know what it needed. Something to fix it. But I would love to see it redone because that one aspect made it feel more like Star Trek. Right, that whole you explore strange new galaxies, seek out new worlds. So you you did that with that one deck. It just could have been done better. These were neat games for the time, but I I just I want an update. I want to see a modern version of these games. If you are really into Star Trek and you want to check these out, I do recommend the the next phase version of all of them to check out. Second would be the original series version. But overall, though, I think these games belong back in 2012. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think with the runaway leader problem, you're going to run into issues because, I mean, Trek fans especially know which ship is better. And if the game doesn't represent that correctly, you run into a whole other kind of problem by angering knowledgeable Trekkies. Well, for a more in-depth look at the Star Trek deck building game series of card games, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.